So here's a bunch of sticks that I cut up at the beach on my last beach combing video. I said I've been carving these dowels. This is an old, old um, Douglas fir. And this is pretty friggin' hard wood to carve with your Dremel. So I decided I wanted to go to the beach and get some softer wood. And um, yeah, these are a lot softer than uh, the Douglas fir for sure. Like these are super old and super hard, these ones. So I'm not going to be carving these anymore too much this year. I might carve one or two. So here's a bigger piece that I uh, found. I don't know. I think it might be um, uh, birch, birchwood, silver birch or some kind of birch. It's got a bit of spolting in there. I did start carving it, but I said I'll stop for this video and we'll carve it on a video. Um, I'm going to carve a tree, a full 360 tree today. They're not my favorite trees to carve. Like you guys have seen me carve lots of these two two dimensional trees so it's like a 2d so you don't you carve the front you don't carve the back and then you can put lights through these little trees i think you get a better shape for trees when you do it with the fence board it's just my personal opinion but i haven't carved too much 3d three dimensional trees with dremels all the way around on uh youtube with the dremel carving so what we're going to do is we're going to carve this piece of wood into a full three-dimensional tree. And we're going to try and make it look good. Can't promise, but I'm going to show you guys the tips and tricks that I kind of learned over the years, I guess. Ha! Hi, Liz! So I got a piece of paper here to get this party started, and I got a pen, and here's the piece of wood. I'll show you what I'm not trying to go for. So, like, say, um, here's the bottom of... Is that on screen? Here's the uh, bottom of the tree. Here's a tree trunk, okay? I don't want my tree to look like this, but it could be a shrub tree. It could be whatever kind of tree you want. You know, I don't want it to be, I don't want this, what would it be, a convex? I don't want it to be on the outside. I want it to be like this. This is just a quick template, everybody. I don't want it to be, I don't want that bend to go that way. I want it to go this way. So when you do it this way, you have a lot more wood to remove than when you do it this way. So like pretend I, we did this. See doing it this way, how much more wood you have to remove on this piece of wood. So I'm going to look at this piece. I kind of cleaned it up a bit so I could see the grain. I could see the center of the trees right there. So there is a little bit of punkiness going on in the center of the tree, the branch or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to move the center when i want my center of the tree to be right here i'm not going to follow the center of the natural branch so now i got to slowly sit here this is why i was looking for softer wood slowly sit here and remove this wood all on all the way around to give it that uh, shape so it's a lot of carving to do to make this kind of um, tree I could make it like this. I'm kind of thinking because I'm lazy, I should probably make it a tree like this. But um, yeah, oh boy. So our, our, our trunk here, we'll just kind of do a line all the way around it. Just Carve Rob, hopefully starts making more videos soon. I don't know where Studio on the Lake is or Kevin Sticks in the Stones, but hopefully those guys uh, start making more videos soon. Anyways, let's get the, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the Dremel 4000 with the Dremel Flex Shaft. This is a very beginning Dremel Carvers video. And uh, here's the cut saw, Extreme Flame Burr. Um, this is my go-to burr. Anybody wants to get the cut saw burrs, see how they got the little spikes like this? These are the burrs that you want to get, like the cut saw, the saber tooth, or the, the Fordham one. Fordham makes them. They're called Typhoons. But this out of all the browns is my favorite one right here. This is the Cutsall Extreme Flame Burr. This burr is normally black when you buy it new, but the coating that they uh, give you wears off. So this is kind of a worn out one. Um, just go to the description below. It'll take you to the Cutsall site. I think you can save yourself 5%. Well, you can. <laughs> Hi, Amy. So, yeah, this is definitely a lot of carving to do. But, uh, you know, I just worked five days in a row. This is my first day off. And... Um, 
well, I just kind of want to sit here, plug away, let the bird do the work, and just kind of uh, put some music on, have a good time. So we'll start carving this on video, but I'll shape this, most of this, off of video. So it'll be like, whoosh, like that. Whoosh. Could make it a blowing over tree, uh, but I don't really want to do that. We'll just try and make it a simple tree. Stand by. Need to drink some coffee. Okay, so before I start carving, you know, when you go to the beach or you get a piece of wood from wherever, from a creek or the forest, and it's all gray like this, um, I suggest what you do is you clean up the outside. Like, I'm gonna, I got to clean up all this gray wood here or pretend it's bark so you can see what's really inside the wood, right? So, because sometimes, like, it looks like this is all weathered. Sometimes there's hidden cracks inside there. So what I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to fire up my Dremel. And I'm going to clean up the outside of this wood. Let me turn my Dremel up and um, turn the fan on and get to it. I already know I found a crack on the other side, like it's right here. Like I found a crack right there. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but I just want to carve deep enough to get rid of that, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is like a bone dry birch. It's super soft. Okay, I'll get this done. Okay, so you can see here I got all the outside of the wood cleaned up. Now I look around, see if I can see any cracks. I kind of carved that crack away that was in there. There's a little bit left, some of it left right here. Not a big deal. So also another thing I do too is I hollow out the bottom. So say like um, if you don't if you don't know how to cut straight or you, you have to use your Dremel to, I don't know. But the cut, hollowing out the bottom like this makes it so it sits better on the table. So you don't have to worry about making this whole bottom perfectly flat, right? So just hollow some of that out there and then it will, should sit perfectly flat. Now um, it does suck to have to remove that wood or the bark. But I'm telling you right now, it's it's better to just get it over with from the very beginning. It just um, it's because say if I start carving this tree in, then I got some of that old gray color. Then you got to go off later and start removing the gray color. So let's. Um, I think what I'm going to do here is carve around this line first to establish our uh, tree trunk. Now. Scale. I don't know how this. I don't know how this is going to work for scale. If it's going to, you know, like if this part's too long or too short. But we're going to. I'm just kind of winging it. Um, what I'm going to do now is cut along this line here, and then remove some of the wood because you want your trunk to taper like this way too. You can have it straight, but I like my trunks to taper in that way so it gives it nice movement. Okay, so I got the line established. Now I'm going to start removing some wood here.
Okay, so there you can see we're establishing our trunk. I'll take more of this off later. You can do an undercut under here too. of a uh, taper it so it's like this you know like in real trees the trunk is usually smaller than the tree, right? Like the trunks, the tree would be way out here and the trunk would be in the middle. But the, the, we're not trying to carve like a real tree. This is somewhat a fantasy tree. But I'd still have to remove more of this wood in here to make this a little bit smaller, thinner than the tree itself. So, yeah, I got a lot of wood to, to, wood to remove on this tree. So, we'll have a center line. I'm not the best at... Um, well, I'm not the best carver there is anyways, but I'm not the best at uh, doing full 360 carvings with my Dremel. You just got to kind of go slow and kind of go with the flow and just spin your piece and... And definitely don't feel like you have to carve as fast like I'm carving. Take your time, let the bird do the work. You know, if you have a Fordham, this is a great time to pull out your Fordham and um, use that. It will remove a lot of wood faster, but I'm not going to pull out my Fordham or my Ram Carver. I'm going to do this all with the Dremel because lots of you people don't have the Fordham. So, But anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along and keep shaping this. I don't want to bore everybody. Just removing the wood, spinning it, kind of just trying my best. To make it kind of seem like this tree. That's why I like doing these. And these 2D trees, like, how are you going to put Christmas lights in this tree? You know you know what I mean? Like the, the fence board trees, you can put lights in easy. You just drill holes and you put the lights in the back. But, I don't know. I'd much rather carve a wood spirit. So I want to get this done pretty quick. And I, I got a piece of cedar I found on the beach. I'm going to make another wood spirit video. <laughs> I sure am. You guys ever heard? <laughs> you guys ever heard of that foreign tree called the butt plug tree? <laughs> okay, so this is what uh, I come up with so far. I could swoosh it more that way to give it more shape. Um, so now, you know, like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I'd much rather be carving a wood spirit. Um, you can do your so you think of your tree, this is how I do mine, this is just my opinion. Um, you can do them like fish scales. So you kind of go like this, try and connect the things. So then you go like this and you make them bigger as they come down, right? Then bigger, then bigger, then bigger. You just keep spinning it around, keep putting on, then you carve them. But I think on this one, excuse me, I think on this one, I'm going to try and do it different. I, there's a tree that I, some people carve. I don't know who they carve them, but I like the way that they look. They're kind of like, um, you see separate, like a, a ring of branches right here, then a ring of branches up here. And then you kind of see the tree stalk, the tree trunk up the middle. I've never really carved. See, here's that crack that I was talking about. Hopefully this doesn't go too deep because when I try and carve that tree branch in there, I don't want this little tip to, to fly off. So that's why I do suggest cleaning up the wood good before you start um, carving because you might see a huge crack in there that's just not going to work for your carving. And you might be like, well, that's not really going to work for me. So, Or you could make it so like... Um, Let's put another line here. You could make it so like 
here's a layer of branches, then there's a layer of branches here, and then you taper it in like this. Then you make a little bunch of little furry branches, like little petals kind of seem like they're in there. There's so many different ways you can do it. Like I said, I, I don't want to spend too much time on this carving, even though I'm filming for YouTube for the beginning Dremel carvers. I think we'll, we'll simplify it and we'll just do it this way. Okay, so because it's this is probably for for me, I got to think about for me what's the easiest, fastest way I can carve it, and I think that would probably be well because I'm just a lazy fat guy with a hole in his head that has some good ideas. I think it would probably be this would be, be the best way for the beginning carvers if they wanted to beginning Dremel carvers if they wanted to carve a full tree. This might not necessarily look the best. But I think it's probably the easiest. See how that's going to, and these are all going to be tapered in like this. Because, uh, yeah, I want to carve a wood spirit. Ha! Huh. Who doesn't? They're so fun to carve. So, you know, I think with these, probably I did it a little bit wrong. I think you want to do like, so when you start at the top, you do smaller, smaller, bigger, 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 bigger as they go down. But that's okay. That's it is what it is. This is just to give you guys ideas, anyways. Um, so in your your tree trunk, um, you just kind of put some lines down here, and you know, and kind of just make it. Just give it some movement. We'll do that later. But we're going to change burrs. I think I'm going to use... Um, I'm not too sure what burr I'm going to use first. I might use like this, um, not the gold one, but the silver taper burr. The cut saw. Get some better lighting here. Okay. This, uh, where's the silver one I got? I hope I can find it. My burrs are a mess. Oh, there it is. No, that's not it. But anyways, this will be the burr, the silver taper burr. So then I can do a cut on the outside. I can use the fat body. This burr is good because you can use the point for little detail carvings, or you can use the side of it to remove lots of wood. So I'm going to use the side of this burr, and I'm going to go like this and just spin this piece and keep that burr like that, right? And, you know, also when you're doing stuff like this, this would just be like fish scales, right, overlapping each other. You, you want to try and get some undercuts up underneath the branch too. Oh boy. Okay, so I got the silver one hooked up. And I'm just going to spin this around, like I said, on the lines. Okay, so we'll just focus on these ones. There you guys can see my cut. Now I want to taper it in and try and do an undercut at the same time. I'm going to taper it in mostly, see how that's like that, but then um, I'll worry about the, the undercuts after. I'll do a little bit of an undercut, but... You just got to find what works best for you. I think taper, for me, I'll taper it and then I'll come and do the undercut.
Then go along and clean it up. Okay, so look at that. Perfect. For my standards anyways. You know, so when I'm doing the undercut, I'm trying to hold this burr as flat and like, I'm not doing the undercut like this. I'm trying to get it way, hold my hand way under there because the flatter you get it apart, uh, the flatter you get it against this part like this, the least ca carving you have to do to remove that undercut line, if that makes sense to you. See how tight I'm holding it down? Okay, so there we go. There's our two things. So I'll get these other ones done, then we'll do the um, the detail things. Okay, for me, I've been carving, Dremel carving for six, seven years now. For myself, I speak for myself, I'm not happy with that tree. It looks like, um, this looks more like a shrub tree that you would see it like um, kind of a, a, maybe a Japanese temple or an Asian temple where they shape it like that and stuff like that. It could be a bell tree. You know, you could have just invented the bell tree. But so what I'm going to do to challenge myself is I'm going to try and make this tree look better. And I thought, how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to carve deeper inside. Uh, where's the pen? I'm going to carve deeper inside here, separate each one of these so you can kind of see the, the tree trunk going all the way up in the middle. I don't know if it's going to work out. And if it doesn't work out, don't hold me to it. I just don't really care because, um, well, where's that piece of wood here? This is a piece of cedar I found on the beach the other day when I was beach combing. I'm going to make a beach uh, wood spirit video. <laughs> so I got the Cutsole Extreme Flame Burr on here. What I'm going to do is just car carve deeper underneath each one of these, um, I guess, high points and um, hollow out there and let's see if I can make it work. So here's the thing. With my YouTube channel, I was thinking about this drink in my coffee. You know, it's very, I'd say 0.3% uh, of my videos I don't upload to YouTube because I think they're useless. Most of the videos that I make, 99, well, 99.9.9% .9 of my videos that I make for YouTube, I upload them. Even if I make a mistake, it's okay. I, I don't care what everybody else is doing on YouTube. I, I do not care, and I'm subscribed to very few channels. I do my own thing. And if this tree doesn't work, I'm still going to upload this video. I just really don't give up. Beep. It's learn from my mistakes. That's what this channel is about, right? So you can see here how you can start seeing that tree trunk in there. All I did when I was doing this, I was just, I did it and I spun it. So when I was carving this one, okay, let's find the pen here, Jordy. When I was carving deep in here, I was watching this one. So when I was carving this one, I was watching this one, and I was trying to align them the best that I could, spinning it like this. So, but there now you see, you kind of, they taper up and they taper down. It's hard to explain, but look in the trunk here. And another thing too, maybe you shouldn't carve that uh, hollow deeper till you've done the carving itself because see it's getting pretty thin there because I made the trunk thinner. But you see how they're kind of riding up the top, top of them, and then the bottom. See how it's just kind of, it looks like it's still together. So I thought what I would do for that, this is the first time I've carved the tree like this. I thought what a little fruit flies around here. 
what I thought what I'd do with that is I got this, um, it's a cylinder, but I don't know what type it is. I think this might be a typhoon, but this is an old sucker. I've had it for many of years since I beginning uh, carving. See, it's got the flat edge on there. If you don't have this, you can use that uh, aluminum cutting burr, like this one here. It's a cylinder type, and it's got the cutter on the back. So I'm going to go in there, and I'm going to cut in there to separate so it doesn't look like it's going like this, right? Just so, I don't know, it's just kind of a little pet peeve of mine. You don't want to do it too thin. If this one's too dull and too burnt out, this um, Typhoon one, Fordham makes the Typhoons, everybody. Then I'll switch to over to this one, and I'll get in there, and I'll just, I'll make it like it's a square cut all the way around. But you can see how that trunk is kind of gets smaller, 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 smaller. So I'm just going to, who friggin' knows? I have no idea why my camera wasn't filming when I was carving this, but you can see, now you can start to see the uh, tree trunk. I did use this. I'll just give you a ex quick example. I'll go around and clean some stuff up. So I just tried my best to use this side of it. That's how you're going to get the most squarest edge. So I'm looking at when I'm carving at this one, when I'm carving this one in here, I'm looking at this one to make sure this one's smaller because it gets smaller as it goes up, right? It will look a lot better smaller than it will bigger. So if this one's bigger than this one, well that doesn't really make sense, but you don't know the way trees grow. And be careful when you're carving deep inside here like that. That's when you could break your flex shaft because this burr could uh, get stuck in there. This is the typhoon bit. It's an old typhoon bit. I don't know if I said that or not yet, but... Okay, so I think that's all right. All right, I think this was the right burr to use. Like I said, if you can't get this one, like say if you're in um, a way like in the UK or something, and you, these are expensive burrs to get, you can always get one of these uh, aluminum cutters off Amazon and get in there too. But there you can see the tree trunk. Let's see, bigger, see how it gets smaller as it goes up? I don't know, whatever. And then here's it top of the tree so now let's um these branches i don't want them to look so perfectly uniform i want to make them look like like this outer edge is kind of like you know it's got shape to it so i think what am i going to use for that i think um this cuts all this is the other i think this is a taper burr too but it's uh, the wider one so i think if i get in there yeah because it's kind of this is like kind of like a square cutter too, because the the flame burr, any flame burrs, they're they're rounded, so you're always going to have kind of a bevel in the. Need some better lighting. See how it's kind of round. For the love of. So here, there's the flare. See how it's all round, right? So you're always going to get kind of a round bevel on there, but then this one is straight. The side of it's straight. The only part of this burr is. The only part of this burr is the tip, and it's freaking goddamn round. So what I'm going to do with this burr, I'm going to clean it up, actually. It's a little bit plugged up. But what I'm going to do with this burr is I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to come out. Okay, let's show you this this one right here. I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to come out, and I'm going to remove some of this edge, too, and carve it deeper on the edges just to give it more of um, a something-something look. Now, if you guys want to get in, like, say... Um, you want to get in really deep into the carving, like way deeper than this. But you want to get really deep in there. You can always take this little black cap off here. And then it makes it thinner so you can get deeper without this little black cap. But when you do that, 
you have to make sure you don't screw up these plastic threads. So, like, see how much thinner it gets when you take that off? So there it is on. Take it off. You could put some tape around these or whatever. I don't know. I've screwed up tons of threads. Lots of my flex shafts don't even have these these black things on. I'm sitting there carving the thing. Boom! Spins off. I can't find it. I just keep on carving and I slowly uh, wear off those threads so you can't put it back on. So, yeah. That's just a tip. Carving fusion tip of the day. Carry on. Okay, so I got this burr on. You'll see me running around touching different spots of the carving. I'm moving it, moving it inside there too, giving it different movements. Okay, so since we got this burr on, let's do some uh, tree trunk movement. Okay, so I'll be back. Okay, so I got all the branches cut in now. So you guys can see like on here where I carve some deeper spots just to give them some more movement. Here's a sanding mandrel you can get on Amazon. I think you get like five of them for 10 bucks or something. The one eighth. They're in my Amazon shop, Amazon store. So um, I got scotch Bright on this mandrel. It's just like this. I got like a 3M scotch bright. Turn your Dremels down. Now I'm going to go along and kind of clean this up a bit. Well, I got to turn my Dremel up a bit more, but you guys get the point. This um, this scotch bright um, this 3M works awesome. It's like sandpaper, but it's not as aggressive as sandpaper. And it's really good at getting rid of the fuzzies off um, the stuff. I use this more than um, the sanding paper now for sanding. All right, so I'm much more happier with this tree now. Uh, 
I could uh, make those leaf things way more detailed. You know, you think that they have layers, kind of like fish scales. I could use this little three-point cutter from China um, and cut some little slits up here. So it looks like the the branches are overlapping, but I'm not going to do that. One thing I don't like about this this tree is the trunk is too thick at the bottom, but it's okay. You can see how it all goes up. This one even has a little bit of movement up the top, so it's not perfect, but it just kind of makes it go like this. Um. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint this. I'm going to come back and finish this video later tonight. But I'm going to, I got this little butane torch here. I'm going to burn inside um, where the, the tree trunk goes up all the way around. And then I'll hit it with the scotch braid again. Then I'm going to uh, paint these um, branches things green. And then we'll make it this uh, for a Christmas theme too. Because, well, it's going to be Christmas season pretty soon after Halloween. And this video will be out after Halloween. So you could carve one of these. Also, I, th I was thinking, you know, like um, I use those special lights I get from the dollar store for my Christmas trees. But you guys could um, easily use those little fairy lights um, for up for up inside these trees up underneath here. You would have to drill a hole inside there to get it so like you don't see the wire on the outside you put the white up under so you'd have to drill, drill a hole inside there but it would be pretty tricky to do um i don't don't do it jordy don't do it anyways let's burn the inside of this the tree trunk having a little torch too is good for um burning away the little fuzzies can you see fuzzies on there oops there's some cut marks but yeah, the fuzzies, it burns that away too. So um, lots of chainsaw carvers use the big torch, the big tiger torch just to burn away the fuzzies. But this is a little, this is a little fruity butane torch. So I'll show you just for a second, getting up underneath. Oops. Yeah, so this is super soft wood, so it burns easy. I'm just going to go along. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to burn all the fuzzies off of it, and uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I did the burning. Um, I did in there pretty deep, the tree trunk. But one thing when you're burning soft wood, be so careful because it's so easy to burn your detail away um, with the softer wood. So I got this scotch braid on my Dremel again, and I'm just going to go along, turn my fan on, and clean it up. Okay, so I'll finish this up and then I'll be back. So this is the first tree um, I made like this. For myself, the more that I do, the better that I'll get. I'm happy with it. I think it's it looks fine enough. The trunk's a little bit thick, no big deal. But um, later tonight, I'm going to quit this video for now, but later tonight, I'm going to paint it green. We might as well paint this brown. I don't know if we need to paint in there because you see how I burnt inside there. You know, carving softwood, I, I say for the very beginners is to try and find some softwood like cedar, pine, or this um, friggin... I can never... Birch, um, birch wood. It's not always the best wood to carve because soft wood doesn't hold detail as uh, I think, and this is my opinion, as good as hardwood. Unless it's nice old seat. Well, I could be incorrect. I don't care. But we'll come back. We'll paint this green. We'll put some weight on it, and uh, we'll just have a good time. Maybe I should do a second video. I'll see how long this video is. But anyways, that's that's that so far. The full three D tree. Carbon fusion, paint time. I got so much stuff I got to do. I don't know if I'm going to be able to carve that wood spare right now. I got to do lots of... I, somebody just messaged me and said they want uh, owl carving for a Christmas present. Anyways. Nope, screw it. I'm doing a wood spare in this piece of cedar. See, it's got some beaver art on here. There's some beaver art right there. So, uh, beaver art, beaver art. 
So I'm going to carve wood spirit on this right now. So this video, wood spirit video, will be out after this tree video, I think. All right, so here's the tree. Um, the more I look at it, the more I don't like this trunk. It's too big, but whatever. Who cares, really? Um, yeah, I could curve it down, but I'm just too lazy. I got my favorite green here. This is Hooker's Green. Oh, I got this uh, dollar store, Hunter Green. And I got this green here. This is something green. It's bright green, fluorescent green. But um, I don't know. This Hooker's Green is actually, <laughs> it's just such an awesome green. It's, um, this is acrylic. It's kind of easier to paint with this dollar store stuff because, well, I know I could dilute this hooker's green with water, but this stuff's more runny. I'm just friggin' lazy now. So anyways, I'm just, uh, there's a curve infusion paint tray if I didn't say that. I just got back from my, uh, chainsaw tent making the base for the, um, Christmas challenge. for mine yeah when I was making it I was thinking to myself Jordy what are you thinking man like you're not the smartest person that you know Jordy but then again it's gonna be awesome I think it is you just don't know till it's done so I should have probably just uh, diluted this paint a bit with some water to make it easier to paint in there but I'm just too tired and lazy to uh, mix it up in water so how about I finish painting this all green I guess we probably should paint this brown you know you could do different green different um, colors of green inside it to get different like um, effects like your high points and low points but this video is not really about painting a tree. It's a, it's just about opening up your mind, having a good time, and curving what you want and trying new things. If you guys can even hear me, this microphone's a piece of shit. But, uh, yeah, I'll get this all painted. Christmas something tree. All right, so there it is painted. I kind of painted the... Uh, the tree trunk in between the thing I put some brown on there just to kind of make it look like a trunk and I painted um, oops missed a spot I painted um, down here to the trunk uh, brown and light brown I missed that spot because you know this is going to be fastened to a base that will be on a coffee table or something so nobody's going to see that spot that I missed I thought about doing some white tips on here for Christmas but I, I think um, <coughs> excuse me I think I'm going to leave this one here I'm not too sure you know you guys can do these trees and you can paint them all white and put sparkles on them and you could like I said you could probably put lights in there if you wanted to I'm just gonna put this one aside and uh, I don't know I don't know if I'm gonna use it for the Christmas uh, challenge or Christmas project or not but that's it so I'm kind of happy with the tree it's something different for me it's just showing you me challenging myself and if this didn't work out I was still gonna upload this video but on another note a few about a couple weeks back, I made a ham sandwich, and I showed that ham sandwich. I says, um, yeah, I got to go and eat my ham sandwich. And somebody said it had uh, too much ham on it. Well, my response to that mentally was, maybe you haven't tried the Canadian ham. So, yeah, this is Canadian deli ham right here. But that was some pepper on it. But that type of person um, would also say, you know, you got too much shrimp on your salad. Why do you got so much shrimp on your salad? Or why do you got too, so much cottage cheese in your salad? Do you guys mix your salad with cottage cheese? Or you got too much milk in your glass of milk? Anyways, that's it everybody. Have fun. Carved trees. Christmas could be here before you know it.